1623, poet John Donne gave us these words of wisdom. Never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. I'll heed this advice literally. I won't ask for whom the bell tolls. But rather, I'll ask the more interesting question. For whom the bell will never toll. Is such literal immortality possible within our physical world? Can we cheat death? There are hints that we may be able to unlock secrets of biology, allowing us to live much longer, healthier lives. But even in the best case, this wouldn't make us immortal. Case in point, the jellyfish, Tertopsis dorni. This species is biologically immortal. Given a stable environment and enough food, it will keep on chugging forever. But this doesn't mean these jellyfish don't die. Predators looking for a snack or boat propellers churning the waters give little regard to the jellyfish's biological immortality. And in five and a half billion years, when our sun begins its final hurrah before exhaustion and Earth's oceans boil away, any jellyfish from the present that by some miracle managed to survive the eons will finally meet their end. Humans, on the other hand, might be able to survive such an event. By the time such a cataclysm takes place, we may have already taken to space, relocating to planets, star systems, even other galaxies. But all the places to run share one thing in common. They exist within our universe. And although scientists disagree about the specifics, they all agree that our universe will eventually end, along with everything in it. So long, immortality. So long, survival of the species. Perhaps, if the universe is cyclical, we might be able to implant a message for a future civilization in the next universe to decode. Or, there might be a way out of this cosmic death sentence. The key to avoiding the end of the universe is avoiding the end of the universe. I mean this quite literally. What if you could travel to another universe, one of your own creation? The first step would be giving birth to a new universe, initiating a new Big Bang. And this, surprisingly, is possible. In the theory of cosmological inflation, pioneered by renowned physicists Alan Guth and Andre Lind, amongst others, the Big Bang did not start from a point source containing all the mass and energy in the universe. Instead, a region of space was at an incredibly high but not infinite energy state. The conditions in this state caused space itself to rapidly expand. This expansion of space is where things get weird and counterintuitive. Even today, space is slowly expanding around us. And as space expands, the vacuum energy or frothy energy that is below the surface remains constant in any given volume of space. So if a given region of space has 100 watts of energy, and then that space eventually expands to be three times as big, now the total energy is three times as big as well. This is the sole exception to the law of conservation of energy. And it is what gives the early universe the ability to grow and populate itself with matter and energy from a small seed. As the early universe expands, the new space in the system maintains the high energy levels of its seed. Now eventually the space will cool and go through a phase change. It will stop expanding so rapidly, and after billions of years, things settle down and look somewhat like the universe we are now in. But after all of this, in our current universe, if we are able to simply pump enough energy into a small region of space, space there would again begin to rapidly expand. It would trigger 
another Big Bang. Andre Lind is adamant that this is possible. In 1991, he submitted a paper to the Journal of Nuclear Physics titled Hard Art of the Universe Creation. In it, he states that the universe may have been made by a physicist hacker. The editors demanded the title be changed and the dirty joke about the physics hacker removed, fearing such claims would offend religiously minded people. Lind reluctantly gave in on the title, changing it to the properly obtuse, stochastic approach to tunneling and baby universe creation. He stuck to his guns with the physicist hacker claim, though. At this point, I hope you're intrigued, but you might be a little fearful as well. Creating a new Big Bang doesn't seem like it would bode well for our current universe. But here, fortunately, is another unintuitive aspect of high energy physics and space time. The same physicists who tell us that creating a baby universe is possible assure us that the universe's offspring will be nothing to worry about. Another Big Bang would not expand into our universe, nor would it rip ours apart. Instead, the mathematics of the situation show that a space-time bubble is created. This bubble exists outside of our space-time, outside of our universe. We would see something, though. If we were able to excite a region of our universe enough to trigger another Big Bang, we would see a microscopic black hole. At least that's what it would look like. It would actually be a wormhole to our infant universe. As the space-time bubble exponentially inflates, the wormhole would close. The black hole evaporate. Since Lin's 1991 paper, several other top physicists have been exploring ways to create these universes. They estimate we are only 50 or so years away from meeting the needed energy requirements. So step one for true immortality, creating a new universe, is in sight. But in order to escape the heat death of the universe, we'll need to be able to travel from our universe to the ones we created in a lab. To do this, we need to stabilize and travel through the wormhole we create. Even the brains behind the baby universe concept did not anticipate this would be possible. But recent breakthroughs show incredible promise. In 2017, physicists from Harvard University and the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton discovered a way to prop open wormholes with quantum entanglement. Currently, their methods would only work on microscopic wormholes. But that's exactly the size of our baby universe. We'd, of course, need to be able to keep that wormhole stable as the baby universe grew, and find a way to grow the opening so that we could travel through it. Given billions of years of scientific advancement before the looming end of the universe, I think it's reasonable to think that we, or any other intelligent being, would figure that out. There's also the issue of dipping our toes in the new universe before it had a chance to cool. Those post-Big Bang years are scalding. Time is on our side here, too. If we were able to develop craft that go anywhere near the speed of light, we could use time dilation in our favor, speeding up the aging of our baby universe. It's aging relative to us, at least. Now, it's a bit unclear where these new possibilities leave us. Are we living in an engineered universe? One created by an intelligence outside of our very space-time? Is such a creator waiting to enter and take claim to their creation? Maybe. Like the simulation hypothesis, which states if a universe simulation is possible, we are probably living in one. 
If creating a baby universe is indeed possible, the same logic tells us we are likely in such an infant universe. But it's not quite that simple. Physicists believe that although we will one day create universes in a lab, universes are also spawned spontaneously by nature. It could be a common occurrence, especially around energetic cosmic events. The telltale, short-lived microscopic black holes would be incredibly hard to detect. So if there are an infinite number of baby universes created in a lab, there are also an infinite number of baby universes created by nature. It's hard to say which one we're in. But don't get too hung up about it. Regardless if our universe was created by a hacker physicist in a lab, or it was a natural birth, we're all here just the same. And I, rather be squitting, will continue to bring you the un and under known. So be sure to subscribe for more. And if you found this video interesting, do yourself a favor and get Zaya Morella's 2017 book, A Big Bang in a Little Room, The Quest to Create New Universes. It tells the amazing history and future of these concepts. I highly recommend it. And of course, thanks for watching.